Hello. Hello! Welcome to our channel. Today we're going to be tasting and talking about the world's most popular spirit, Pfizer. So the reason we're hoping to make this video is because we finally get back to China after almost four years uh, since COVID. And we got some like gifts from friends and family. And we also got some hidden gem um, in the local store in New York. So I think it will be interesting to do a video together, just, you know, trying different alcohol. It will be fun. It will be. So I'm curious, how much do you know about Baijiu production? Is that similar to how it's made, like whiskey and rum? That's an excellent question. So Baijiu is actually very different in some ways, but similar in others. So like whiskey, Baijiu is made from grains, although the primary grain that we use in Baijiu production is sorghum. Whereas whiskey will use corn, rye, bi barley, wheat, stuff like that. The big difference between baijiu and any of the other types of spirit is it's distilled in its solid state. Okay. So oftentimes for whiskey, you have a lot of liquid, whereas with baijiu, you will just have the solid. Let's talk a little bit more about what goes into baijiu. So we mentioned the grains. So baijiu is a combination of grains, water, and chu. So chu is a ball or a block that is made of mold, bacteria, and yeast, and that is the fermentation agent, and that's what allows it to not only be distilled on grain in a solid state, but also fermented on grain in a solid state. So I think today we have four different types to try. We do, we do. We'll talk a little bit more about each type while we try it, as well as mention the four different aroma styles of okay. my two. Well, we shall fun. we start with our first one? Sure. Let's bring the glasses. All right. I feel like my glass is more boring than yours. <laughs> I have the special Mimi ones. <laughs> so our first one we're going to try is this, Jiang Xiao Bai. So Jiang Xiao Bai, as a product, was designed to be young people's first drink of alcohol. Um, we actually got this in the local store. Uh, I'm surprised that they have this. Never heard of it when I was in Beijing. But you can see how it tries to appeal to young people. It's got a little cartoony person here. It's got some inspirational messages, some fun pictures. So let's give it a try. Yeah. Let's see what we can get from Viper. Why don't you take the first taste? Mm. What's it smell like? Alcohol? <laughs> yeah. It's very clear. Lives up to its name. Yeah, that's paint thinner for you. So, the first thing I get is the astringent alcohol flavor, like that really strong kind of acetate flavor. I have to come clean with you, I did some research, and Jiang Xiaobai has very poor reviews online, so this is not great. But that is a characteristic of light aroma baijiu, is it has a short production cycle, so it's very astringent and very strong on the palate. You'll get that in stuff like argotol. The packaging is also looks like argotol. Moving on to the next. Our next one is a very special bottle. This is a strong aroma style baijiu that's actually imported by an American, Derek Sandhouse. So he has some information that we'll provide with you later. But this is a strong aroma style. It is made in Sichuan, in mm. Luzhou. And we will give it a try. Yeah. So why don't you give that a smell first? Okay. Hmm, this smells much better than the, than the first one. I can't describe, but it smells like Maltai. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's high praise, yeah. It's actually a little sweet. Hmm, agree. That's what I get on the nose. I get like the sweetness mm -hmm. from it. How you describe mm. it? And on the palate, you get a lot more sweetness as well. I agree. I'm not an expert, so I'm mostly like, this is sweet, and it tastes like something that's not jet fuel. <laughs> so it's already miles better than our Jiang Xiao Mai. Some other information you might want to know about strong aroma baijiu mm -hmm. is it's kind of similar to Jamaican pot still rums in some senses in that it's more funky, it has more flavor, it's very flavorful, and you do get a little bit of that sweet, almost fruit-like quality from it. Whereas our light aroma is more herbaceous, but people say herbaceous, it's really just jack fuel. <laughs> 
Okay, so next one, we got a special gift from one of my friends. Da -da -da -da. So get the packaging! Very fancy looking. Alright, a lot of very nice baijiu will come in boxes like this with very intricately designed bottles. The two bottles you've seen so far are much newer styles. You usually don't see them in clear glass bottles, but this one is much more representative of what you'll see in a very fancy baijiu. Let's open it up. The first, we already opened it once, I have to admit, so this is already cut you. Flip open the lid. We've got a little pull cord here, which will help us get our top bit out. Oh. All right, do we want to take a look at what's in our top bit while I get yeah. the bottle out? Oh, look at this. It's the Baijiu glasses. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. So, a little information on that. Oftentimes when you have Baijiu, you'll drink it in little shots. And they're not like the big shot glasses that you get in the US or in the West. Like the like the professional YouTuber. Yes. <laughs> so, unlike shot glasses you'll get in the US, Baijiu is often drunk in these kind of ornate glasses. You'll see actually it's very tall, but the inside space is a little bit smaller. These contain about a third of a fluid ounce, so they're very small, but you'll be drinking many of these over the course of a banquet, so you don't want to be drinking too much at once. So now let's give our rong da jiang jiu a try. Why don't you try it and I'll explain a little bit about it. So this is a sauce style bai jiu. Sauce coming from of course soy sauce, not any other type of sauce. They don't got buffalo sauce bai jiu out there. So it is usually characterized by a very rich earthy taste. Kind of similar to mushrooms, very umami. Hmm, smell very saucy. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, it feels like it's blossoming in the on the tongue. Mmm, you do get that characteristic kind of umami nose that mm. a lot of sauce might have. Mmm. I feel like it's very rich. Like I almost get chocolate notes when you drink it. Very rich, very powerful taste. You can tell why this is the most popular and the most prized style of baijiu. It's good. So of the three so far, which is your favorite? I definitely like the second and the third one because they are very different style. Like this one, I can taste the sauce. Always sort of intricate uh, flavor on your tongue. And the second one is also, it's interesting. The smell is very nice. Like the, is that the herbaceous? Or no? That one, that one I would say is more fruity. Fruity. Yeah. Okay. The How about first, you? I, I have to say, I think the second one is the most approachable. It is very clean in taste. It doesn't have this umami funkiness, which we are not as used to drinking in the West. Mm. But this one is a very nice baijiu. So once you've had a couple baijiu and you want to try some real local stuff, you might want to get your hands okay. on some of this. All right. Shout out to my friends. Hashtag not sponsored, but a gift. <laughs> to our final showstopper. All right, this is the pièce de la résistance, <laughs> the national spirit of China. This is also a soft style baijiu called Guizhou Mao Tai. This is the most prized type of baijiu in all of China. Would you agree? Yeah, but I feel like it's more of a signature whenever you see people having dinner together on the gathering. Yes, not any type of dinner though. It's got to be a fancy dinner with some fancy people to have some Guizhou Mao Tai at it. Actually, it's also a gift for my mom. At minimum in the United States, a bottle retails for about 500 US dollars. So we are very thankful to Susu's mom for <laughs> allowing us to try it. Yeah, so we're gonna use the special glass to try the Mao Tai. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for the Mao Tai, we both decided to get a glass just because it's the good stuff. Ganbei. Ganbei, mm -hmm. have a try. Again, you get that kind of like chocolatey taste and like the really thick sensation of it. Yeah. I definitely also feel mushroom. 
Yep, yeah, it also has a nice umami kick to it. It's also a sauce style baijiu. So it'll have some of the same characteristics as our rongda jiangjiu. And in fact, rongda jiangjiu is made in the same village oh, as wow. Maltai. Interesting. And then, want to have another? <laughs> it's good. It is good. Anything else for today? Yes, I figured we would finish it out with a bit of trivia. So, the name of the game is Answer My Questions, and the punishment for the game is if you get one wrong, you have to take a sip of this. This being, of course, the Jung <laughs> Shop <laughs> You get it no right. Offense. A little bit of offense. <laughs> if you get it right, then you get your pick of the other three to drink from. Feel free to play along in the comments. Our first question is, where does the most important person sit at a bank? In the center? In the center? All for me. It's a round table, so no. That's what, I mean, <laughs> no, food is the most important. Facing the door. Facing the door, that is correct. Pick any of the non Jiang Xiaobai ones to drink from. I'm gonna try the uh, Mingjiang. Alright, or Ming River. Mm -hmm. Still good. Well, but you know, after I tried the Mao Tai and the uh, Rong Da, I definitely feel like this one is not as flavorful. Mm. It's more plain after. I would agree, yeah, it's more crisp and clean. You didn't answer the trivia. Can you drink the. That is true. No, I didn't answer the trivia, that's okay. I'm master of ceremonies, I can do that. So, what are the top three brands of Baijiu in order? I can give you options if you want, but let's try it without first. Mao Tai. Yep. Liang Ye. Yep. Er Bo Tou. Ah, unfortunately, number three is Lu Zhou Lao Jiao. Ah. So, now you know what that means. Jiang Xiao Bai. <laughs> it smells nice though. So she says. <laughs> okay. All right, are we ready for question number three? Yeah. Question number three. How do you show respect to someone when you are clinking glasses? So let's say I have this glass, you have that glass. You want to be respectful to me? How do you show that you All right. Under. Exactly. The lip of her glass is under my glass. So if you want to be respectful to someone in China, you put the lip of your glass under their glass. Take your pick of the non Jiang Xiao Bai ones. I'm gonna try them all time. Of course. Okay. Number four. When did alcohol production begin in China? Oh. I can give you some options for this one. Okay. 2,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, 7,000 years ago, or 9,000 years ago. 7,000. Good guess. The answer is. 5,000. 9,000? 9,000 years ago. Wow. And in fact, the first alcohols produced in China were fruit alcohols, including grape wine. So, yeah. eat your heart out, Italians. <laughs> <laughs> All right, unfortunately, you got this one wrong, and so you must drink from the punishment cup. Take so bye. Okay. All right. Question number five. What is the biggest baijiu producing province in China? Sichuan. Yes, it is indeed Sichuan. I was looking for Sichuan. All right, that is also correct. You may take your pick of the baijiu. That's the least I can try to answer. Okay. Back to the Maltai. Make sure I should try some. <laughs> All right, mixing it up a little bit. Some rongda. Okay. All right, the last question, the sixth and final question, is a tricky one. Mm -hmm. What to the nearest billion is the market value of Maltai? 2.9 billion, 37 billion, 52 billion, or 43 billion? 52 billion. All right, we actually overshot it. It is 43 billion, which is already 16 billion ahead of Liang Ye, which is our number two, and over 38 billion more than the first Western brand on the list. Yeah. Unfortunately, that was an incorrect answer. We gotta drink our Jiang Xiao Bai. All right, so do you feel like you learned a little bit today? Yeah, and it's also interesting to try all the different drinks at the same time. It's, it's fun. It is. It do is. you enjoy drinking baijiu as well? 
I do, I do. I'm looking forward to trying some more varieties in the future and maybe getting some rice aroma representation up in here. So please, in the comments, if anyone knows anything about Baitil and would like to share, please let us know. If you are looking for more information, Drunk in China by Derek Sandhaus is a fantastic source of all information Baitil in English. And I also recommend checking out his website, Ming University or Ming River. And he has courses on Baitil that are completely free and a great way to learn more. It's nice. Uh, hoping to have more of like tasting in the future as well. Yes indeed. Bye bye. Ta ta for now.